said we had five weeks, so like, less like two weeks ago. <laughs> Guys. We in like, I don't know, May. Well, if you're not taking final. Second two weeks into May, maybe. One through 42. Okay. Uh, look at all of the heads turning. Um, so we are talking about trigonometry. What? No, that's Landon's thing. Which is new for you guys. Yeah, that's Landon's thing. Um, so it turns out, this is kind of based off our last chapter. When you have a right triangle, and you know like at least one of these angles here, what do we know about these two right triangles? They're the same. They're similar. They're similar. Uh, which means like the ratio of like A over B, or sorry, A over D equals B over E equals C over F. All those ratios are the same. So they, what they did was they kind of used those ratios and the angle. So if you know one of the angles in a right triangle, you know what these ratios got to be. It's got to be the same in every right triangle. If you know one of the angles of besides the 90, the ratio has to be the same. So what they did was they made three functions called sine, cosine, and tangent. Okay. That's what they look like, but I'll never write it like that again because we always use the abbreviated form. This, you guys have seen this on your calculator. You will need your calculator a lot this chapter. Sine, cosine, and tangent. I was wondering what okay. I got. Hey, what, what they do is you feed on your calculator, you feed them an angle, and they spit out a ratio. Um, actually, before we talk about that, let's look over here. All right. And Wait, mine says sin and then like. Uh, negative one. Yeah, we're not doing the negative one right now. I don't see the regular. Oh, never mind. Okay. Um, all right. Let's say this is uh, our triangle. So, um, if we're talking about angle A here, um, well, actually, what's this side called in the right triangle? Hypotenuse. 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 hypotenuse is always the longest side, and it's also always opposite the 90 degree angle. Okay, the side that is across the way from angle A, the farthest away, um, you know if somebody lives across the street from you, or if there's a store across the street, it's called opposite, like from Lowe's, opposite of Lowe's is like the dog park or whatever. Yes. Or, yeah, anyway, so this side is opposite of angle A. So it's across the way from angle A. Okay, the side that's next to angle A that is not the hypotenuse is called the adjacent side. So the opposite but not the hypotenuse? No. The side that is next to angle A that is not the hypotenuse is called the adjacent. Adjacent is a fancy word that means next to. So that's not just a math word, that's just a, a word. But adjacent means next to. So this side is adjacent to A. This, uh, the hypotenuse is also adjacent to angle A, but we call it the hypotenuse. Okay, that's if you're talking about relative to angle A. If you're talking about angle B though, which side is opposite angle B? Mm. Which side is opposite angle B? Oh, angle B is AC. Okay, yeah, exactly, down here. So if we're talking about angle B, this is the opposite side. And that would be the adjacent. This would be the adjacent. But the hypotenuse is still the hypotenuse. No matter what. Opposite. Okay, and we never use the right angle to do this, so angle C is kind of like out. It's got to be one of the two acute angles. Angle B or angle A. Okay, so anyway, if we know an angle, A stands for an angle, you can plug it in the calculator, and what your calculator would spit out is a ratio. The sine function, what it spits out is a ratio of the opposite over the hypotenuse. Um, yeah, and cosine.
cosine of the angle, cosine of some angle, what it spits out is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And tangent of the angle, what it spits out is opposite over adjacent. Okay, so for example, let's say I have this triangle. This is my angle that I'm talking about. Um, let's say I knew the sign, I don't know what sign, a, angle A would be here. Let's pretend that it was like 34 degrees. Okay, so if I plugged in sine of 34 degrees, what I should expect, I just made this up so it's not going to be right on the calculator because I, I, I'm not sure what it, what it is. But uh, if I plug in sine of 34, what it should tell me is the ratio of opposite over hypotenuse. What's the opposite of 34 degrees here? Five. Five. What is the hypotenuse? 13. 13. So what I would expect the calculator to spit out is 5 thirteenths. But actually, the calculator wouldn't spit that out. It would spit out a weird decimal. Okay? So the, calcu the calculator spit out some kind of weird decimal. I don't know what it is. But, um, but if we know that this is 5 and 13, then we're just going to be putting the fraction version, not the decimal version. So you have to put in the degree, too? No, 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 no. Um, a lot of times we won't know what the angle is, so they'll just say what sine of A, and we're going to put like 5 over 13. So that's the answer. Sometimes we don't know the sides, but we'll know the angle. And we'll just, like if I know it's 60 degrees, then we, we'll just plug that in the calculator. Um, sometimes I just use the picture of the triangle. Okay, this stuff is used to solve triangles, like missing parts. They... Back in the old days, it actually has a lot of uses. Yeah, I know it's kind of hard to imagine, but like when back when they used to navigate in the ocean, you uh, like with sailing ships, they used trigonometry and stars like to triangulate their position and find where they wanted to go. I guess now we can use it like with rocket science and stuff like that. But um, anyways. This stuff right here, we need to get in our head, and there's kind of a magic word to help us remember this. And that magic word is Sokotoa. 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 No, that's not, not a joke. But anyways, what do you think that means? Sine of the angle equals opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine of the angle equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent of the, of the angle equals opposite over adjacent. So that kind of that word encapsulates all this, kind of like an acronym, stands for all this stuff. I like that. Yeah, it's very useful. I don't know who came up with it. Have you done the emo? It's good. Emo likes the Definitely are one. Yeah. She's just in an emo phase. You're in your emo phase. <laughs> <laughs> She's wearing all black. Look at her. <laughs> <laughs> She's wearing all black. Are you depressed? No. It's true. You used to be bar blonde and Barbie. Oh, you know, it's Timmy. <laughs> <laughs> She's got emo. It's because Timmy is your best. It's because Timmy is your best. It's because Timmy is your best. What is she? Dark. She didn't know. It looks like it's like a rainbow. It's just it's a little cloudy, so it's... It wasn't cloudy a minute ago. Yeah, it was. It was no, it's getting darker. darker. <laughs> it's definitely getting darker. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. yeah. Wait, we think it's like a pretty possible in the sun. Like, okay, really like, let's, <laughs> let's jump in. Uh, guys, this is a two-day assignment, by the way. Oh, yeah, it is. Uh, I love you. Worried. Except for Emily. I love <laughs> Wait, that gives you a new Thursday tip for me. It gives you a new Thursday tip for me. But this is like, I'm doing it. Okay. By the way, number one on the test, 
which will be like three weeks, is this right here. Like, you have to know it from, from memory. Therefore, you need to know Sokotoa, how to spell it, what it stands for. Okay, so this is number one from the book. Sign of A. What is sign? What is sign supposed to tell us? No. What ratio is it supposed to tell us? By the way, this would probably have been a good note to put on the top of your page. It's also on the top of your. It's on the top of your book at like 577, I think. Okay, opposite over hypotenuse. What is the opposite of angle A? Three. Three. What is the hypotenuse? Five. Five. So that's the first one. What's what's um, log mean, George? Log? L O G. On the calculator. It's we'll learn it next year. It's hard to explain. It has to do with the exponents. And even after I explain it, you'll probably be a little confused. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> We, we went over log, like reviewed it today, and they actually, somebody remembered what it was, so I was happy. Cosine of A, what's, what's cosine supposed to tell us? The adjacent over the hypotenuse. Right, so what's adjacent to four. angle A? Four. four. What's the hypotenuse? Five. I'm so smart. Okay, after this we're going to go around. So get ready. Tangent of A, what's tangent supposed to tell us? What's opposite of angle A? Three. Three. What's adjacent? Four. So if we actually knew the angle, whatever A is, like 50 degree, whatever, whatever it was, and we plug these in, they, the calculator wouldn't spit out 3 fifths, it would spit out 0. 0.6. It wouldn't spit out 4 fifths, it would spit out 0. 0.8. So what is the H, Y, calculators? So later on we'll have to use the calculator. We'll get to that. What does H, Y, mean? Hypotenuse. Okay, while well, I'm setting up number three, you guys might try number two. This might take me a minute. Yeah, I'm getting, speaking of the AC. Adjacent means next to. Okay, um, number three, we're doing D. I want to get to 18 today. We need a. Okay, uh, let's just go around the room. We'll start with Paxton and we'll go. Okay, so same So opposite over hypotenuse. Right. So six over six. No, what's the opposite? Opposite of D? Oh, I was looking at E, I think. Okay, five. Over okay, you guys remember you're not supposed to leave square to square roots in the denominator? Uh, your calculators can fix it, or you can just multiply top and bottom by square root of 61. It just becomes 5 square to 61 over 61. 61. We could just leave it. Yeah. No, can't leave it. Sorry. Put Mr. Jordan in. Alright. Whitley. What is cosine the supposed to tell us? The adjacent over the hypotenuse. Okay, what's the adjacent? The 6. And the hypotenuse? Square root of 61. 
Yeah. So just like the last time, we're going to multiply by square root of 61 on top and bottom, and we get that. If the 6 and 61 reduced, we would need to do that. Also, your calculators can do it. Not Linux's. Okay. Uh, Emily, what's tangent supposed to tell us? Yes. And what is opposite of angle D? Um, yep. And adjacent? R E does six. Yes. Alright, that doesn't reduce or anything, so that's so. okay. yeah. right. I'm gonna set up number five. what Sokoto is for. You've got a few weeks. I'm going to ask you at the beginning of the class every day. Are you done? I'm thinking. Okay. Um, all right. This time we're doing Y for some reason first. That's fine. But why? Good. by square root of 13. That would be the final answer. Okay, number 
Verse 7 is missing a side, so how do we find the missing side? Well, no. I'm pretty sure. Oh, you can do 30 squared plus 16 squared equals x. Yeah. Right. Pythagorean yeah. theorem, since it's a right triangle. Yeah, Emily, this is your specialty. Oh, I love it. Okay. Come on. Some people might have been naughty in math class. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I know. I just remembered that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Oh, somebody naughty read it in my book. <laughs> okay. So you do 30 squared plus 16 squared, and then the square root of that, right? Because that's what x squared is. It was either Leo or Jerry. And it should come out as 34, I think, if I remember right. Yeah. That's what it says in the book. No, it says Leo and Jerry. But what about who, who was before then? Okay. Huh? What about before then? <laughs> Nobody used it for them. All right. Uh, this section is a little bit different, but it kind of starts saying, Paxton, what would sine of A give us? Okay, sine of A would be opposite over hypotenuse. So, um, 16 over 34. Right. Opposite of 16. Hypotenuse so 34. Okay, that would reduce, but the directions told us to change it to a decimal. This, this is like what the calculator would spit out. So, just do like 16 to like, how do we turn it to a decimal? 16 over 34. Wow, but I have a button. Okay. Four, seven. Yeah, you can do the S to D button, like and standard to decimal. Four, 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 four. It's a big number, I'll tell you. Okay, that. we're going four decimal places, and you need to round it correctly to get credit. Oh. So, so four, seven, zero, six. Okay, tell me what came after the zero before you. Okay, so the fourth decimal place is right here. So you look at the fifth decimal, and if it is five or greater, then it would round this five up. Six. So point four seven zero six. If it's below five, if this digit is below five, this is going to stay down at a five. Okay. Cosine with the what would cosine give us? Cosine would be the J to over the hypotenuse. So thirty over thirty-four. Oh. Uh, Should have taken taken notes on that one. I thirty over thirty-four. Uh, yes, adjacent over hypotenuse. And then what's that? As a decimal. Eight eight point four. Point you mean point eight eight? Yeah. Eight eight two four. There you go. Okay. Emily, what's tangent gonna tell us? Yo, is our house high? Opposite? Shh. Over the Adjacent. Yes. And what is opposite of 8? Opposite of 8 is 16. And adjacent? Uh, I feel like we're doing the same, like yeah. sine, cosine, tangent both times. <laughs> we'll change it up this time. Uh, okay, then okay. what's 16 over 30 is the decimal? It's like 0.53? Yeah, 0.53 repeating. Yeah. Okay, so if we're going to four decimal places. <laughs> yeah, this three would not round that one up. So. Who said that? Coral. What the heck? You're supposed to be the smarter one. What are you looking at, Emily? Huh? What did you call me? Emily. <laughs> what was it before? Emily or Timmy or Timmy. I'll let you pick. It's funny you don't even get your own name. <laughs> First he said Tim. Wait, he's like, no. What are you talking about? Why are you shooting up? Why are you Your dogs are barking. Put the carpet Okay. <laughs> Emily, how could we find X on this one? <laughs> She's picked like, on three I times in a row. <laughs> Opposite over. No, no, no. <laughs> what? How could we find Emily, the missing side? Oh! 13x, or 13 oh squared. Oh my goodness. 
So we need sine, cosine, and tangent of a. Don't worry, it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen that quickly. It takes like half an hour. It's like a snap. Okay, Jaden, what's sine supposed to tell us? Um, opposite and um, yeah. Hypotenuse. Hypotenuse, yeah. Okay, what is the opposite of m? Um, well that is, uh, that's like two, the square root of Yes, what's hypotenuse? Um, 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 two? No. Okay, hypotenuse is the longest side across from the middle. Oh, it's four. Okay, we don't have to reduce it because we're just changing it to a decimal, so that's uh, matter, but. Do you need me to 
All right, yeah, go ahead and plug that in. Roman, what's cosine? Tell us. Uh, um, um, adjacent and hypotenuse. So that which, would be. Which, 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 uh, uh, two and uh, four. Crap! Which what? one over two? Okay. What's two oh. divided by four? Oh, point five, point five, point five, point five. Okay, I got it! It's, it's point <laughs> eight, eight, six, 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 zero, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> okay. No, no, he basically no, no. said it. Paxson was tangent. Orange. Um. <laughs> okay, how dark it is. We're missing it. What's opposite? Yeah, you better go ahead and be so rational. Quiet. Opposite over adjacent. So, um, SM. Alright, um, two, two thirds over. Okay. That's square root of 3. 1.7 and 3, three two, 2, 1. To throw up. Alright. Ah. Uh, I'm going to throw up. There you go. 